Hi students, uh, welcome to Smart Biology Doubt Clearance Session. So, so as most of you guys have requested one of the most difficult sections for UVs, immunity under that also adaptive immunity is one of the most difficult sections. So today here I'm going to talk about B cell mediated immunity or humoral immunity. Along with that, I'm going to talk a little bit about antigens as well as antibodies. And also most of you had requested what to explain what is monoclonal antibodies. So I'm going to explain that in this video as well. So first of all, let's start with what is an antigen. So okay, so all of you guys know there are, there are someone called pathogens. So when pathogens enter into our body, basically due to our immune system, those pathogens can be eliminated. For example, take a bacterium. So this is a bacterium. So I have drawn here. This is a bacterium. Okay. So bacterium. You know what is the outermost layer of the bacterium? It is a bacterial cell wall. So imagine this is the bacterial cell wall. So our immune system is adapted to detect the outer borders of these living beings. Whether it is a virus, fungus, or bacterium, doesn't matter. Our immune system is capable of detect their external environment. So that if imagine it is a virus, there is a virus protein, uh, virus proteins in the core. Also, if it is a fungus, there is a fungus cell wall. Uh, imagine if this is a bacterium, there is the bacterial cell wall. Like the likewise, the outer borders of the organisms can be detected by our immune system cells. What are those immune system cells? Especially if it comes to adaptive immunity, those will be B cells as well as T cells. Okay, so. Here also, now imagine, I am going to explain about the process of basal mediated immunity. So this is a bacterial cell wall. In the bacterial cell wall also, there are specific regions. Imagine again, I am repeating, there are specific regions which can be detected by our immune system cells, which are B cells and T cells. Those regions which can be detected by T cells as well as B cells are known as antigens. So again, so antigens are the regions in the bacterial cell wall, it can be fungal cell wall, it can be viral protein. So likewise, the regions which can be detected by T cells and the B cells, those are known as antigens. Here, the bacterial cell wall, this is the specific region which can be detected by T cells and B cells, so I call it as the antigen. So this is the antigenic region, this is basically the antigen. So, for your inference, so I have further zoomed this in. So, this is the antigen part. Okay, so basically, this is that antigen part. Okay, so now look at here. In the antigen, also, there are specific sites. In the antigen, also, there are specific sites which can be exactly detected by these B cells or T cells. These exact specific sites actually. Epitopes. These are known as epitopes. Again, in the antigen, okay, inside the antigen, there are specific sites which can be detected by <coughs> the B cells or T cells. These exact specific sites are known as B cells, uh, are known as epitopes. Understood? Again, antigen is a region which can be detected by these regions. Epitope is exact site which can be detected by B cells or T cells. In this antigen, so this would be an epitope. So how can a B cell or a T cell can de detect this epitope by binding their antigen receptors? Antigen receptors into the epitope. epitope. Again, this antigen receptor attaches to this epitope and detect this antigen which is a part of this bacterium again so B cell has a protein which is known as an antigen receptor that antigen receptor is bound to B cell membrane then there are sites in the antigen receptor which can be attached to the epitope so these antigen receptors go and bind to this epitope and identify the epitope so then they make a complex known as antigen antigen receptor antigen this is antigen this is antigen receptor antigen antigen receptor complex okay so now as soon as this antigen antigen receptor complex is formed now we say a definite word which is known as synthesization then it's like it's, not, it's like this 
So B cell has bound to this antigen. So B cell now has the ability to take all the information out from antigen. So that means basically B cell now identify what exactly does this bacterium look. What are his what are what are his abilities? What are the disease causing co disease causing toxins in him? Likewise, now B cell has the ability to identify this antigen so that it can exactly identify the nature of this pathogen as well. Okay, so that is the basic function of having this antigen antigen receptor complex. Okay. So as soon as this antigen antigen receptor complex is formed, so B cell can identify the antigen so that the bacterium, which is known as sensitization, after sensitization there will be proliferation. Again, first one is sensitization. After synthesization, there will be proliferation. So in this phase, proliferation phase, what happens? Now these B cells keep dividing, 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 dividing. Ultimately, they form a clone, which is known as B cell clone. Again, once this antigen is detected by this B cell, B cell get activated, we call it sensitization. After sensitization, B cell get proliferated and ultimately form a big clone known as B cell clone. Now here there are millions of B cells. So in this B cell clone, most of the cells, remember I repeat, most of the cells are turned into what you call as B effector cells or B plasma cells. Again, most of the cells in the B cell clone are converted into plasma cells or B effector cells. So plasma cells are the cells which can produce antibodies. Again, plasma cells are the cells which can produce antibodies. So what happens actually during this formation of antibodies? Okay, look at here. So this is a B cell. So B cell has this antigen receptor. So now you hear actually these kind of B cells are proliferated so you have millions of copies of this exact unit that means you have B cell and the B cell antigen receptor again so you have millions of copies of this unit so now we imagine so when you have millions of copies of this unit once it is the means B cell clone now you call it a different name as plasma cell so basically it's the same B cell receptor but now when it is inside a clone now and converted maturated so you call it as a plasma cell. So now what does the plasma cell do? Plasma cell actually releases these antigen receptors. Plasma cell, which is the matured form of B cell, releases the antigen receptor. So now it is no longer known as antigen receptor. Now it is known as antibody. That's what happens. So you can understand antibodies are actually the secretory form of antibodies are the secretory form of previous antigen receptors because now these antigen receptors are detached from plasma cell that means the previous B cell and now those are secreted into the blood so you call it as antibodies are the secretory form of antigen receptors understood okay so that is what the antibody is so you know students the immunity seminar is coming up so you can clearly know further about this T cell mediated immunity and the B cell mediated immunity and you can further clarify any doubts that you have but I'll explain one more thing which is a problem for most of the students that is monoclonal antibodies that is monoclonal antibodies okay so what happens in these monoclonal antibodies okay so now you know what is an antibody it is a secretory form of antigen receptor. So what actually would happen, this antibody can again go and bind to this antigen here, that means epitope here, because this antigen receptor and this antibody is exactly same. So the antibody also can again go back and bind to this antigen, but thereby neutralizing the antigen, so the neutralizing the pathogenic effect of the pathogen. Okay, so now when you form antibodies, actually this is something university level, but in order to uh, explain this, I have to take these examples. Antibodies also, there are several types of antibodies. One is immunoglobulin A, immunoglobulin D, immunoglobulin G. So likewise, there are several 
kinds of antibodies. Antibody A, antibody D, antibody G, antibody M, also antibody E. So likewise, there are several types of antibodies. So what happens is, what is monoclonal antibodies? Those are the antibodies actually which are injected to us when there are injections given to us to have the passive immunity. Artificial passive immunity is mostly by these antibodies. Those antibodies are monoclonal antibodies. What do you mean by these monoclonal antibodies is? Okay, imagine now I have an infection. So when I have an infection, most of the time the, during the infection, the antibodies which are produced inside my body against the infection is this G type of antibody. Okay, that means the antibody type G. So what scientists actually used to do is so they actually extract these IgG antibodies, so the antibody type G, they extract these antibody type D, antibody type G from most of the humans and pull those G antibodies in one area, actually in like some kind of a storage, pull those old antibodies in a storage and now they produce injections from those G antibodies so that if, the, if those G antibodies are injected to another patient's serum, another patient's body, so it's like the natural antibodies are produced inside the body. So those are like the same exact G antibodies which would have produced in my mind if I had an infection. Understood? So again, if I'm having an infection, I'm producing in my body due to my immune system, I'm producing IgG. So what scientists did? So they collected all of these IgG antibodies from several, several humans and ultimately pooled them into one storage and made injections out of them and then we, they made, made injections and then inject those things into our serum so that we wouldn't get the infection. If there is an infection, these antibodies can easily tackle those infections so we wouldn't get the infection by ourselves. So that is what the function of a monoclonal antibody. Okay, so hope you understood about this lesson. If you have further doubts, don't forget to comment on these sections. Okay, whenever you have a doubt, comment on these videos. I will obviously make sure that I will make further videos. Thank you so much.